everyone, welcome to another episode of Maya Adin Talks. Today we will talk about the House of Dragon. But first, a note of the host of this podcast. I would appreciate it if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family. The reign of House Targaryen begins with a prequel to popular HBO series Game of Thrones based on George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon is set nearly 200 years before the events of Games of Thrones, telling the story of the Targaryen civil war with King Viserys. One target Targaryen's children battling for control of the Iron Throne. What we all know, of course, it's very known uh, in the Games of Thrones, of course. Uh, there is, before I'm going to the plot lines of the episodes, I like to say something already about it. Um, I really loved this series. I have, I didn't know it was a prequel before Games of Thrones, but I really, really loved it. Uh, I think one of the well-known characters or the actor who played it, Damien, um, is of course by Matt Smith, and I couldn't get a grip on him if he is good or bad. And if you know his movies and series, although this is just um, something I was feeling okay, nice uh, again, a series about dragons because you know I love dragons, I love fancy, etc. And although I do think Games of Thrones is very dark, uh, I like this series because. Of course it is a prequel, but it's also, you start to learn which houses they are, what their, uh, how everything worked uh, in the houses, but also uh, how those families are related or uh, what connections they have. And that's what I really loved it. Uh, I love the dragons in this, although those dragons are not free, but we see that they are yeah that they are free they are owned by a dragon rider and we see that um they talk in a different language to the dragons and i must say i do like the language to the dragon because um when i talk uh, in my spiritual language, it's a totally different language than, uh, of course, the normal English or the normal human language we know. But I must say, I really, really loved this whole series. And I am very excited for the next season, which will be, I thought it would be next year somewhere. I i read it somewhere so uh yeah i really love this series um what also what uh, i must say the dragons in this series are looking a bit weird and different for my taste what i always see uh as a dragon so but maybe that's just uh, maybe they did that because they have to be scary and um, of course this is some kind of a dark age and so maybe they made it like this as in yeah just in the total swear of uh, what uh, the house of dragon is and of course the games of thrones and um, for the ones who really like the games of thrones i will also do a episode and um, probably more 
of the House of Dragon and the Games of Thrones uh, because it's a very uh, long series and a lot of talk to talk about. I will do more episodes in the near future of uh, this podcast. So let's see what the plotline of all the episodes are and I will give you a bit of my um, comments on there as well. Although it's very, um, there's a lot happening uh, in all the episodes, so I will probably ending up watching it again in in a few days. So um, it's just only ten episodes. So um, yeah, let's start with episode one, and the title is "The Hairs of the Dragon." Uh, with both his son's death, old King J. Harris one. Targaryen conference at Great Council to choose an heir. The Westeros lords select Jerry's eldest grandson, Prince Viserys, over Princess Rhaenys, the eldest grandchild. Nina, nine years into his reign, King Viserys organized a tournament to celebrate Queen Emma. Aaron pregnancy, confident she is carrying his long-awaited male hair. The small council disregards Master of Ships Lord Chorus Federion's warning that the triad she and alliance of Essos Free Cities threatens to cripple Westeros shipping lanes, Hand of the King, Sir Otto Hightower, criticize Viserys' brother and heir, Prince Damon, Damon, for his brutally as the city watch commander. Well, that's what I said in the beginning too. I can't determine if Damon is a good person or a bad person, because he does do awful things but he does also good things and i don't know i and he yeah it, it's a, a very character that is i don't know you know it's just you see him doing those bad things but also good things and you can't determine just if he is good or bad and um, he is out of control I think although in his later years he became a lot calmer although he's still that strong and uh, I don't want to say devious but he is still yeah he 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 still can be that awful person. At the tournament, the young, handsome Sir Kristen Cole, a common-born knight, outcompetes Damon. Meanwhile, Viserys sacrifice Emma in childbirth. Performing a C-section, Emma pleads against and their newborn son, Balin, shortly after. Viserys refuse, refuse the council's pleas to appoint a new heir until Otto reveals that Damon mockingly styled Balan's ass. The heir for a day. Outraged, Viserys banished Damon from King's Landing and appoints his only living child, Princess Renya, heir to the Iron Throne, revealing the to her Aegon the Conqueror's dream that inspired him to unify Westeros. I always thought that Princess Rania would be a more suitable heir for the Iron Throne than Daemon. And so will be her other um, 
hairs and you know Rania is going to have a very difficult and well how can I say this yes she is a dragon rider but she also have a lot of concerning of the um, the kingdom etc etc and I don't think she can totally be herself and she has to make a lot of sacrifices to keep quote unquote everyone happy episode 2 the rogue prince Six months after Renya is named as heir, Damon has illegally occupied Dragonstone, supported by loyal City Watch guards. When Prince Admiral Gretchen's drawer, known as the Crab Feeder, managed the Stepstones Archipelago at the Essos, Triage's Beheist, Rania suggests showing force. The small council dismisses this and Rania is instead relegated to appointing a new Kingsguard knight. I must say I never liked the short council. There are men there that is only want to have men power and they do everything to get that power. Even of the raining hairs etc ignoring others advice she chooses sir Kristen, the only knight with actual battle experience so otto sends his teenage daughter lady elisons to privately console the grieving king she advised that fesrash and ranya should discuss his kingly duty to remarry lord Collis and his wife, Princess Rianne Vinyas, proposed that fisheries, unlike their Valerian's houses, by marrying their 12 year old daughter, Lyanna. Meanwhile, the small council learns that Damon, proclaiming himself the true heir, stole a dragon egg and intend to marry his mistress, Miseria. As a secondary spouse, Otto and a small detachment sail to Dragonstone to relieve the act, retrieve the act. Ranya follows on her dragon, Cyrax, and forces Damon to reannounce his false claims and give her the egg. Viserys announced that he intend to what Alicent, angering colleagues, who approached Damon to propose an alliance. In this episode, I noticed that how much uh, stretch and how much um, the atmosphere around the whole family is and how much strength runners and the king have to have to put a stand and that's like i said you never know what damon will do and he had a life that was really bad in a way because he did everything in one way what is bad going to brothels and etc etc and even seduced uh, Rania, his own niece, and I thought they would marry later and have even kids. Um, but yeah, I can understand that, you know, we always, the common people always look up to like monarchs or the royal family and or they have presumptions that they have a, the good life and, and they don't have stress etc etc but I bet the differ uh, it is I won't I wouldn't change my life with that of a princess 
never know, never. Because I know you have to live this certain life in the spotlight, but also out the spotlight. And you never can be yourself because everything, what you do or what you say will be questioned. And trust me, as a person, you don't want that. Episode 3 second of this name for three years lord Carlos and prince damon have battled crutches da and his pirates in the stepstone without the iron throne support meanwhile king fisheries planned a great hunt to celebrate his and pregnant queen Elizabeth's son egon's second birthday when yours Sends her father's excessive attention towards her half brother Egon. The ailing king insists that Renyas, now 17, must marry to form a strong alliance and protect their lineage. Many suitors are considerate, including two year old Prince Egon. Lord Lionel Strong recommends Sir Leonard Valeroyon, Lord. Corley's son as a potential match to mend the rest between the two houses. Overcoming previous doubts, Fishery assures Renria she remains his heir and can choose her consort. Meanwhile, brothers Hubert and Otto Hightower secretly scheme to make Egan the successor. I don't know what about about those boys but I never liked them and even the sons uh, of I think one of them I don't remember which one they were also plotting against Rinya's son sons and they were very cruel as well and it reminded me of Damon I think he was no, it was not Damon's sons, but okay. Just part of the uh, series, I was thinking, I really, really had to do with Renya. She is the mocking bird of this whole happening. And in one way she could uh, lead the kingdom to something good. There are all those men who are against her, but also think that a woman couldn't reign. And that's ridiculous. It is really, really old medieval thinking. And the thing is, is that the Night Watch commander of, she called Sir Konami, I believe. I think he was the right person to marry her, but all twisted in the family, etc., make it uh, impossible. Um, Fisheries agrees to send aid to the Stepstones, seeing his brother's support as ending his chance to prove himself. Damon acts as bait to ambush the treachery warriors, killing the crop feeder and winning the ensuing battle before the crown's forces arrive. Episode 4 King of the Narrow Sea After an unsuccessful month-long tour to choose a consort, Renya returns to King's Landing. Demon also returns after conquering most of the Stepstones. Now named King of the Narrow Sea, Demon swears alliance to Viserys and hands over his crown. As the reunited brothers celebrate, Alison and Rania reconcile. I must say, um, Alison was the best choice for the king. I think she always supported him in everything he did, etc. And also keeping the family together. After dark, D 
Damon and Rania sneak out to explore King's Landing, drinking, attending a bodily play, and visiting the brothel. Damon seduced a willing Rania, but unable to consummate their affair, he abandons her there. Returning to the Red Keep, Rania utilizes her position to cause her Kristen into having sex. Informed by the white warm spy, so Otto tells the king about demon and Rania's grousing. And you know, I never liked that white warm spy. I always hated it. And he reminds me a bit of uh, Grima from uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, who was uh, like a servant of Saruman. So he reminds me about that. And you know, uh, I hated it. And also how he walks around and, and, and conspired to uh, between every royal and no, I never liked him. Ascent overhears and privately questions Renia who swears against the accusations. Viserys confronts Demon who hung over and this he would seemingly confirms the rumors and proposes he wed Renya. Viserys claims Demon only wants the crown and exiles him to the Vale. To avoid scandal and strengthen the throne, Viserys orders Renya to marry Sir Leonor Velayon. Viserys dismisses Otto as his hand after Renya accuses Otto of manipulating him for his personal gain. Grandmaster Melos gives Renyas a precautionary abortification tea at Fisherai's request. Episode 5 We Light the Way. In the field, Damon murders his wife, Lady Rhea Royce, before departing King's Landing. Sir Otto warns Queen Alison that Renya becoming queen makes Alison children a threat to the throne for they are the king's sons. Rania and Sir Leonor Valion are betrothed, mollifying Lord Collies. Understanding Leonor's homosexuality, Rania proposed fulfilling their royal duties to produce hairs, while being free to pursue their own lovers. So Kristen is humiliated when Rania declines his proposal to elope to essence and assume new identities. She prefers the current sexual liaison. Alison questions Kristen about Rhiannis and Demon, but misunderstanding, he confesses to being Rhiannis' lover. During Rhiannia and Leonor's patrol celebration, Alison enters, interrupting Fessor's speech. Wearing a green gown, the single color for House Hightower, call to arms. Demon also unexpectedly attends, confronted by Rhea's cousin. Demon denies murdering her and wishes to assert his claim to inherit her land. Lena's lover, Sir Geoffrey Lundmount, Sir Mrs. Christen, in Renya's paramour. When Kristen believes Geoffrey is threatening blackmail, he brutally kills him, devastating Leonor and horrifying guests. Renya and Leonor are privately wed late that night. Fisheries collapse after the ceremony while Alison interferes as the disgraced Kristen is about to commit suicide. Like I said, there's a lot of um, things going on here. And even in all the noble houses and how things going, I think this is really uh, in a somewhat way chaotic. But also like, I really, really, it's really messed up in that time, you know. And, and it still reminds me of today. There are a lot of countries and a lot of people who still saying, oh, gay people have no right to have children or go, 
gay people. And as you can see, the houses are very manipulating and things. And you know, it reminds me a lot of the Medici family in uh, Italy, the whole thing about it. And, but it is really a, um, the whole, and, and you need to find the red thread through it. And that's why I am saying, I think I need to, um, yeah, watch it a few times more for, um, yeah, see it all, you know, and because there's so much happening and it also reminds me a bit of like in the Roman days, you know, with the gladiators and the only thing I always had compassion for was the two uh, sons of uh, Rania, not with, uh, with her first husband, but her second husband, I think, I believe. But, um, yeah, it's really chaotic and there's a lot of things happening. Episode 6. The Princess and the Queen. Ten years later, Renéas has given birth to three sons. Jacques, Lucerus and newborn Geoffrey. All lack the Valerian platinum hair, but King Viserys rejects Queen Elizabeth's assumptions that Sir Leonor is not their father. Elizabeth tells Aegon he must prepare to one day dispute Renan's claim for the Iron Throne, as he, Viserys' firstborn son, will always be a threat to her claim and his life would not be safe if she were to take the throne. Damon and his wife, Lyanna Valerian, visit Pentos with daughters Bela and Rihanna. The prince offered them a lordship in exchange for an alliance against the resurgent Dryashi. Unable to give birth after an agonizing labor, Lyanna commands her dragon Fogar to incinerate her. her. Sir Criston, now serving alliances, goads Sir Harn into attacking him by implying that Harwin fathered Rhaenyra's children. To each family strive, Rhaenyra proposed Jacarus marry Helena, Alain's daughter. With Alain's rejection, she believes Jacory is a bastard. Shortly after a disgraced Sir Harwin bids Rhaenyra and her sons farewell before his father. Hand of the King Sir Leon, Strong escort him to Harrenhal Castle. It is strongly implied that Sir Harwin is in fact the biological father of Rhiannon's three son. Alliance confines to Sir Lyons, youngest son, Laris, that she wishes her father Sir Otto was still the king's hand. Laris recruits three criminals to set a fire at Harrenhal, killing Lionel and Harwin. Rihanna's move her household to Dragonstone, also bringing Leonor the Slover, Sir Krell Corey. Now this has happened in this episode. I think the whole storyline and the whole uh, royal kingdom with the dragons has be very, become very uh, chaotic and almost impossible to follow again but okay i think jr martin did that for a reason i don't know episode seven driftmark king fisher and he 
His court attend Lady Liana's funeral in Dristmark. Rhiannia and Damon reunite and are physically intimate. Meanwhile, Viserys is forced to reconcile with Damon. Damon. Prince Aemon claims Farquhar as his dragon, causing an altercation with his cousins and nephews in which Luceris slashes Aemon's eyes with a knife. Seeking justice, Queen Alicent lunch at Luceris with Viserys Valyrian steel dagger to go out his eyes. I. Rania blocks Alicent, and now I'm reading this. I really should we do watch this episode because I can't remember this. But injured herself in the process. After claims that Vienna's sons are bastards, Viserys disagrees anyone questioning their legitimacy will have their tongue removed. Later, former hand of the King Otto Hightower assures Alan that they will prevail, while Rania and Demon unite again against Alicent and her family. To continue the true Valley Orion lineage, Princess Wynish suggests that Lord Corys pass his title to his granddaughter, Bela, by marrying to Prince Lucerys, and Leonor has not sirened and children Sir Carl appears to murder Leonor. With an overwhelmed and inconsiderable Rhinus and Collies believing a charred body to be their sons. Demon and Rhiannra privately marry in the old Valerian Dragon Lord tradition to perpetrate the Targaryen bloodline. Meanwhile, it is shown that after faking his death, Leonor secretly has escaped Dressmark with Kral. And you know, I always think it was stupid that uncle and niece would be married and family. But I also saw that those two are good together and that Damon actually cares for uh, Rania. So that is nice to see as well. Um, yeah, we see a lot of what is happening. And by the end of this all, you could see that they uh, go on in one way, their own lives in a way. So yeah. Episode 8 The Loft of the Side Tides. Six years on, Lord Collie's Valerion is severely wounded fighting in the Stepstones. His brother Sir Feymont petitioned King's Landing to name him Collie's heir, proclaiming Rhyneus' son, Lucerus, illegitimate. Rhiannia and Demon return to the capital to defend Lucerys claim. King Fisery is now bedridden, disfigured and mentally muddled. Queen Aslan, Alicent and the King's hand at the high tower oversee all the royal matters. Alicent covers up Prince Egan's raping a handmaiden. Never liked him. Rhiannia's proposed two marriages arrangements with House Valerian to gain Princess Rania's support. She implores Viserys to defend her succession, quoting Aegon to conquer dreams about the prince that was promised. As Fairmont's petition is presented at court, Viserys, body ambulatory, entered and declares Lucerus to Drismark hair. 
Damon B. had filmed when he denounced Rania was as a whore and her children's bastards. The family appears to reconcile during the fest, but after Fesserite departs, Eamon in cities a fight by insulating Rania's three eldest son are eliminated. Meanwhile, Alison, Lady in Waiting, Tyler, regularly provides Damon's former mistress, Mashara, with information. Fisher is near death, mutters parts of Aegon to the Conqueror's dream, which Alison mistakenly believe to refer to her son Egon. I'm sorry, I never ever ever liked those two in a way, and we can see that Alison have a double agenda here, and even with the main characters being older, and I must say, King f was very uh, disturbing to see because he was. It reminded me of um, King Theodred in from Gondor from out of Lord of the Rings. He looked like that when King Theodred was so ill, and or even like a walking almost skeleton. That's how it re reminded me, and you know, it's just. Um, it's very intriguing how this whole storyline is developing. So, once again, I'm very, very, very excited and curious what they will bring in season two. Um, the only thing what is a bit pity and what I would like to see in the next seasons, what will be coming to, um, is that they see and show us how they train dragons or what is the bond with the dragon. And it always reminds me a bit of my favorite uh, fantasy books from a Dutch author named Patty van Delft. She didn't make uh, the dragons uh, prisoners of human or wizards or majors. She let the dragons told to be free, but they are bonding and connecting with humans or a elf. And to see the opposite here that the dragons weren't free and where yeah how can I say they they even been forced to do things and and like that there are like dragon take carers that they were also like we you are your boss and you do what we say um i don't like that to be honest i always want to see and have seen that the dragons are free and that the dragons would be there as an alliance and so yeah that is a, a whole different story in this series episode 9 the green council at the first of day sir otto and the small council plot the crown prince to crown prince egan Sir Kristen kills Lord Beesbury, who opposed the scheme. Kingar's Lord Commander Harold Westling resigns to protest. Otto keeps Fessor's death a secret to fortify the council's position, then coerced the noble houses to switch their alliances to Egan. Those resisting are imprisoned or hanged. Otto and Alicent discuss on whether the kill or exile 
Winya and separately rush to find and influence the missing Prince Egan. Otto sends Kingard's brother Sir Eric and Sir Arak Cargill while Alison's task Kristen and Prince Egmont. The Cargills find Aragorn Egon first, but Kristen and Egmont forcibly take him. Lord Larry tells Aslan that spies include Lady in Waiting Tyler are within the Red Keep. Alison pr approves eliminating the Hat Spy. Alison pursues Wade's our residence Egan to claim his birthright. King's Landing citizens are herded into the Dragon Pit to witness Egan's coronation. Princess Rhaenys refused to support Egan's claim and held captive. Eric frees her and she enters the dragon pit cavern astride her dragon Melish. She finally breaches the grand hall underneath the oblivious civilians, causing mayhem and deaths. Melish roar and the unlocking roll is before Wayne's Flees King is landing on Dragon Bag. Now I must say, I do like her dragon. And it's really, like I said, it's just, I think I had the feeling that she and her dragon have more a alliance bond than mistress and dragon bond. So I like that. The last episode of season 1 is episode 10, The Black Queen. Princess Rhaenys arrives on Dragonstone to announce King Viserys dad and Prince Egan ascending the throne. The news shocks Rhaenyra into a premature stillbirth. Demon pressures Rhaenyra to go to war when Sir Arab brings Viserys crown. Rhyma is declared queen, so Otto Hightower presents King Egan its terms for Rania's concession, including retaining her royal title and Dragonstone, and her son's right to inherit Driftmark. Damon is angered with Rania's considerous conceding to unify the real realm against the northern threat foretold by Egan, the Conqueror's dream. Lord Colry's pleaded pledge, House Valerian alliance to Rhaenyra's black faction. Demon plans to recruit more dragon riders and awakens a large dragon hibernating in a cave. Princess Jacquesus and Lucius are sent as envoys to secure houses Aaron, Stark, and Baratheon as allies. Lucian meet with Lord Barras, Baragaton, and discovered Prince Aemond is already there to secure the Barracus as allies for Egan the Second. King Egan the Second has offered Barras a political alliance to match between his daughter and Aemond, while Rhaenyra has offered nothing. Lucerus leaves on his dragon, Arax, but Aemond pursues him with Vagar. The fractious dragon defy their riders. Arax burn Farker. A Farker then defies Lucius and Arax, stunning Aemond. Rania is devastated and enraged upon receiving this news. So, it's a lot happening in uh, the ending of this uh, season one. And I'm very, very curious what's gonna happen in season two. I really, really love this series and my rating for this series is a nine. Um, it really, really uh, is
this is serious with a lot of manipulation, uh, treachery, and God else one more. Uh, very dark like in Games of Thrones. Uh, and it does remind me a bit of Lord of the Rings. So, um, yeah, I don't know if J. Martins um, was inspired by Lord of the Rings. I do think there was a connection there, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, the rating on IMDb is an 8.6. So, I think in general that uh, the public is liking it and yeah it's just uh, what I do think is that in every episode we just seen um, it's a, a lot happening and I think you need to f watch a few times to um, see what it really is and, and uh, to discover what's really happening there. Well, thank you for listening and join me in two weeks for a new episode of Maya Eileen Talks. The next episode is about Hocus Legacy and I will show you a bit in game uh, live. So you can watch this on the YouTube channel uh, what Hocus Legacy is. You can listen, subscribe and comment comment to Maya Eileen Talks on the YouTube channel or join the Facebook group. I also have two podcasts called Ghost Talking Track and the Dutch Ready Room podcast. Ghost Talking Track is a podcast hosted by me and I will be joining by another female track girl friend from Canada, Amanda Hopper. We will recap every two weeks an episode of Star Trek. At the moment we are at season three of Star Trek TNG. Ghost Talking Track is also to listen Follow and subscribe on Anchor, Google Podcast, Spotify, Amazon Music, or on one of your favorite podcast apps. The Netherlands Already Room podcast is a podcast for all the Dutch trackies to talk about everything Star Trek. Of course, this will be spoken in my native language, Dutch, and it's a video podcast. You can find the Netherlands Already Room on YouTube and the Facebook group. I will see you in two weeks.